Welcome. One thing is for certain, we are all welcome. This is the Jesus way. He called people to him. He asked people to come to him. He welcomed them. He got cranky with his disciples when they tried to prevent anyone, anyone at all from coming to him. He sought the company of all kinds and types of people to affirm them, to challenge them, and to call them to an abundant way of life. And today he calls us to join him. So we are all welcome. My name is Hilary Chrisley, and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church. As we gather today, we share a place in God's heart and at Christ's table. Enjoying life together with one another and with Christ, we celebrate Holy Communion. It is the great Thanksgiving, a time for us to thank God for all that God offers us and to receive once again the gift of love and mercy God offers so freely. God's grace is shared with us in a special way through the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. If you do not have the communion cup of juice and wafer with you, I invite you to have on hand something that would be communion for you, something you already have with you, a piece of bread or a cup of juice or water. If you have nothing with you at the moment, that's fine. Christ's presence is with us all. The communion table extends to all and extends into your home. For Christ is the host of this meal. Christ sets this table, and all are welcome, no matter your age or stage of life or faith. He sets the table of this feast of grace with his life and his love, and in his expansive love, all are welcome. And together we share in the new life God offers. Let us join in worship. <laughs> Welcome. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. We are branches rooted in the vine of Christ. 
We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, sustainer. May we grow wildly as God tends us lovingly. I shall now read from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way prove that you are my disciples. Higher than the mountains that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant in the trial and the change, one thing remains, your love never fails, it never gives up. It never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up It never runs out on me Your love On and on and on and on it goes It holds overwhelms and satisfies my soul. I 
that I never ever have to be afraid. One thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death. can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we draw near to you in prayer this day, trusting that your love changes lives and your resurrection brings hope into the world God loves. You have drawn near to us and walk with us through every challenge. We are so grateful for signs of hope, even in the midst of the pandemic, for recovery plans, for generosity and creativity offered in so many surprising corners. As we lay before you the concerns on our hearts today, draw near to those we name and bring the gift that is needed. We lay before you, Lord, those who are in the news, the headlines this week and situations in the world where justice and renewal are badly needed. We lay before you, Lord, those who are in, in the hospital or in care, and all those who struggle with illness, pain, or health burdens of any sort. We lay before you, Lord, families under stress, relationships that are strained, and friends and neighbors in need of reconciliation. We lay before you, Lord, people seeking food, homes or jobs in these hard times, and those worried about economic recovery from the pandemic. We lay before you, Lord, those who face discrimination daily and who lack respect and opportunity because of their identity or feel violence in their daily lives. Lord Jesus, we believe that you hear our prayers and will be faithful to our requests and concerns. Help us seize the moments you give us to reach out to our neighbors and show them the love you have to share. And so we pray together the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A caring gardener recognized that it is sometimes imperative to prune puny branches from plants. Cutting them off makes possible the abundant growth of branches which are growing. Jesus teaches this truth, reminding us how God cleanses or prunes each branch. Once pruned, Jesus encourages his followers to remain in him as healthy branches, remain in the vine. It's only by abiding that we are vitally connected to Christ. And that connection is what allows us to produce fruit. Just as fully connected grape branches produce grapes, so fully connected Christians produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. At our best, we see these fruits, these holy characteristics, when we reach out to others in our congregation and to our neighbors and to those we serve around the world. Money is a vital offering, and today, as you make an offering of your financial resources, I encourage you to also commit to sharing the fruit of your connection with Christ. How will you offer your fruitfulness today, this week? We give you thanks, O oh God of mercy, for the ways you work to tend and shape and prune our lives, allowing us to be abundantly fruitful. Forgive us when we pull away, believing we can hoard our lives and operate better without connection. Especially as we continue to be COVID cautious, renew in us the energy and desire to find creative ways to share our gifts, our fruit, with others in your name. With grateful hearts, receive these gifts and our intention to live fruitfully, for we give them to you. Amen. I shall now read from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 16 and 21. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know we remain in him, and he remains in us, because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God's Son, God remains in us, and we remain in God. We have known and have believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who remain in love remain in God, and God remains in them. This commandment we have from him. Those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus 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 be the center of my life Jesus be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus 
Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center, everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. The rose bushes at church and here at the parsonage are beautiful. Roses are attractive to bees. When not treated with chemicals, the, the petals are edible and the fragrances are lovely. They also call to mind the biblical images of the Rose of Sharon and the hymn we sing as we anticipate the birth of Christ. Lo, how a rose air blooming. Roses like this need tending and pruning. Pruning involves cutting away parts of plants some of these plants are dead, but many are still alive. Branches that are growing far away from the plant must be pruned. There is renovation pruning where plants that become a tangled mess get cut back. And usually at the start of the year, they get a hard pruning and are cut back so that they can harvest their nutrients and be ready to grow stronger and to bloom come springtime. Sometimes there are parts of the rose that are growing very well and using a lot of nutrients, but have really nothing to show for it. We call these suckers because they basically just suck the nutrients out of the ground and out of the rose's main stem in the ground, but provide nothing for anyone else. They're only in it for themselves. So they need to be pruned and trimmed so that the whole rose bush can benefit. So in pruning roses, as many of you do this at home, you will need to cut away any roses that have given their all. And perhaps you want to cut off a beautiful rose and, and some stem and some thorns in the stem. Either way, you need to be sure where to cut your rose. If you're cutting a rose for display or cutting a rose because it is, well, lived out its natural beauty and its offering for the bees, you want to be sure where you are pruning it. 
It's not just pruning that's important. It's the how and the where and the why of the pruning. So to prune a rose, I was taught to prune a rose just slightly above a five-leafed bract. That's a five-leafed bract. This means that what grows there will provide another bloom. If you cut somewhere else on the rose bush, you may get a branch or maybe part of a stem, maybe even some leaves, but most likely not another rose flower. It is very important to not just cut, but to know why and how and where. There are beautiful rose bushes. There are beautiful rose bowers. There are beautiful trailing rose vines. So on your gazebo, uh, hedging your yard, on bushes at the corner of Bennett and Glendora Avenues, or a single rose in a vase. Seeing these flowers can help us understand a little better when Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Jesus says, I am here for you for support and nutrients and sustenance and a reason to be. The divine gardener, Jesus assures us, knows how to tend and care, including the pruning process. And God, of course, just doesn't prune to show power or might or whimsical nature or partiality. God prunes us. God tends and cares and helps us thrive by taking out the things that hinder, anything that keeps us from being the best we can be now. When God tends and cares and prunes our personal spiritual life, our community spiritual life, it is for the benefit of us all. It is a divine spiritual practice to help us join Christ in bringing the fruits of the Spirit into the world. You know them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's life for ourselves as individuals and for us together as a congregation, but also to transform the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Tending and caring and pruning of the branches on the vine include our time together with God in prayer. Time in prayer is indeed a time of sharing with God all of who we are, our needs, our concerns, what's happened to us through the day, as well as the needs of those dear to us. It is also a time for us to receive from God the messages about correction or encouragement for our lives. In our conversations with God in Christ and the Spirit, we find more direction about what kind of fruit we can produce to share with others. Time spent with God reminds us that we have a source of unlimited indwelling sustenance, a reminder that we're not alone in this, that Christ is indeed at the center of all goodness and kindness and mercy. We pray together so that we may remember that Christ is the vine and we are the branches. Pruning looks quite harsh and can scare us away from religion, from organized religion, from even practicing our faith, for fear that if we make one mistake, we will be cut off, we will be rejected, we will be doomed. In using this garden metaphor, Jesus speaks of a gardener who knows what is good and right and appropriate and who wants to see the whole vineyard thriving, wants to see each branch, each tendril, each cluster of grapes come to that life in the vine. A life where we offer the fruits of our Christian labors and spirituality and Christian walk. And we also offer our life in the vine, all of it, to be corrected, to be cared for, and to know when to let go. So we offer all of who we are. Some of us know this very well in this last week. We have been sharing on things that from our lives and in our homes that are good and useful, but are just not what we need anymore. In fact, they may be hampering us. We've been sharing things that we need to let go and taking them to the new unto others thrift store for the mission fundraiser. Hopefully you've been putting hashtag 68 on the items so that a percentage of the amount sold will return to our United Methodist Women's Missions to go on to help others' lives. So sometimes letting go is a pruning. Sometimes choosing one direction you're going instead of another direction is a pruning. Sometimes turning a new leaf, starting a new healthy habit, deciding that you don't need to be around those kinds of toxic friends or family anymore. That too can be a pruning. There are all kinds of pruning. There are different kinds of pruning that, that they can even be positives. The positives certainly do come out of letting God shape and tend and prune our lives. So with all of who we are and all who we can become, 
we offer ourselves today to the loving and caring art of the gardener. As we prepare to gather at the table Christ has set for each of us and all of us, let us offer ourselves each day to remain connected to Christ. Source and sovereign rock and cloud, fortress, fountain, shelter, light, judge, defender, mercy, might, life whose life all life endowed. May the church at prayer recall no single holy name, but the true Behind them, all is the God we proclaim. Word and wisdom, root and vine, shepherd, saviour, servant, lamb, well and water, bread and wine, way who leads us to I am. May the church at And stillness, breath, and dove, thunder, tempest, whirlwind, fire, comfort, counselor, presence, love, energies that never tire. May the church at prayer recall no single holy name, but the true. Behind them, all is the God we proclaim. We are here because Jesus has called us. Strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table where in bread and cup he meets us. And through him, we who are different are joined to each other. So come, not because you understand, but because you are understood. Come, not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come, not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you just as you are. Join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope 
through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us receive the bread of life. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us receive the cup of salvation. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Thank you for pouring out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. You make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. God's blessing now to faith confessing the people love God from this dwelling take leave the service is ended or now be extended the fruits of our worship in all who believe the seed of the teaching receptive souls reaching shall blossom in action for God and for all. God's grace did invite us and love shall unite us to work for God's kingdom and answer the call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever Tasks of our everyday life we will face, our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children of each tribe and race. With your grace you feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving give honor to Christ and that name which we bear. 
Friends, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, loves us enough to offer to be the vine and invites us to be the branches. When we remain connected to Christ, God's power can transform even the most difficult situations. And the Spirit will nourish our faith and imaginations so that we can bear fruit in many ways. May we go out from this time of worship assured that God's love is our strength, the Holy Spirit energy is our joy, and Christ's trust is our hope. Amen.